Hello and welcome back to Lokana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're taking a look at the top 16 deck lists for the Enchanted Tour Winter Edition 2024. This event was run by 3 for 1 Trading whose website I'm, I'm looking at now. Um, this was in Vienna in Austria and featured 128 players. Just looking through this website, this tournament looks amazing. It looks like this was so much fun. There was so much up for grabs. Um, loads of photos as well of the entire event. Massive shout out to the event organizers for taking the time to go around, get loads of photos of the players. Like, this is fantastic. And look at these prizes. They got these big stitch dolls. And that wasn't the only one. There were loads of those. And then these three trophies, each coming with a um, enchanted Shere Khan. Um, th this is amazing. Like, look, at, look at all these stitches. <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. I would have loved to attend to have attended this tournament. This looks so much fun. Uh, the, that's the top 16 right there. No Stitch is not the 17th member of the top 16. Oh, we riot. We riot! <laughs> Definitely just knocked my camera over when I did that. But yeah, and this website looks really well organized. And look at all the players here. And nearly all of them are looking at the camera. If you took this in the UK, you would not get this. You, you'd get the back of heads, you'd get phones, you'd, someone would be flipping the rod. So we all need to be a bit more like Vienna, Austria. This looks like it was such a fun tournament. Massive shout out to the organizers. Great to see loads of shots of the uh, of the event. And yeah, they did a top 16 cut. Oh, the, they do have the specific prizing listed here as well. Yeah, first place, um, first, second and third all got trophies and enchanted cheer cans. And then first place, six displays. I don't know if that's boxes or cases. I'm assuming boxes, but might be cases. These guys seem like they went all out. I'm not actually sure, but a lot of product. Six, four, three, fourth place got two um, displays. So I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing just boxes. Fifth to eighth got a box. Ninth to sixteenth got 12 packs. And then 30 non-cash prizes, promos, Disney board games, laptops, plush, stitch. So I imagine that was, I don't know if that was split between the top 16 or if that was going beyond top 16, but nonetheless, this looks like it was so much fun. Huge shout out to them. So yeah, we're going to take a look at the top 16 decks. Um, eight of them are Ruby Amethyst, I will say straight up. Although a couple of the Ruby Amethysts are a little more, a, a, a little out of the ordinary. So let's jump straight in and see what did well. This video is sponsored by Card Market. Go see Card Market for all your trading card game needs. My information today does come from inkdex.com, so massive thank you to them as always. They will be linked down below. And yes, first place, we've got some Ruby Amethyst Spellbook Control. High counter one drops. We've got eight here to feed our bounce mechanic stuff. We've got four snake, four fox, four goat, four um, rabbit. We've also got two Merlin crab here to boost our characters. Three coups go to be an additional early drop that we can get down because not playing something till turn three feels bad. And because he replaces himself, we can play a bit more aggressively into things like Be Prepared. Three Maleficent for the extra card draw. Four Stylish Surfer Mini to be an annoying evasive threat. To cheat big Laura, um, cheat out some big lore at the beginning of the game. And can work with our Crab to take out opposing Stylish Surfer Minis. We're not seeing any other answers to evasive here other than the standard removal stuff that Ruby Amethyst always plays. Four copies of Maui with that Rush 6-5. We've got three copies of Lady Tremaine for additional removal. Two copies of Ursula, Big Bulky, Quest for three. Um, uh, draws a card as soon as you play her and denies a law, so often gets a lot of value. Two Elsa with that Deep Freeze to slow the opponent down. Three copies of Teeth and Ambitions, really good into aggro or for opposing oppo um, for uh, certain evasive characters that you might come up against so that Mini can finish the job. Four friends on the other side, four Be Prepared, and two Sorceress Spellbook. So a tried and tested list. Pretty pretty cookie cutter here, but huge congratulations to uh, Bella for getting first place in a 128 person field. As always, we'll do all the Ruby Amethysts in a row. This time we're only seeing seven of the one drops. We're seeing two coups goes. We're seeing the full counts of um, uh, Madame Mim the Madam Mims and the Merlins. Also the two crab here to go with the four stylish surfer mini, but we are also seeing four copies of Peter Pan's shadow with that tiptoe ability giving evasive to our rush characters, making our Maui's and our foxes able to deal with evasive and just making them annoying threats in and of themselves that are harder to remove. Three Maui's, as I just said, four copies of Tremaine all in here, three Ursula, not seeing any Elsa in here, no Maleficent, wasn't in the first place list either. Once again, seeing the three teeth and ambitions, four friends, four be prepared, no spell books in this list. 
So yeah, a high account. All it we're, we're like seeing these Peter Pan shadows. Um, at this point is like 50% of Ruby Amethyst lists, but still most are between what, like, it's one or a two count. I've seen one or two decks that were running three, but I do think this is the first that I've seen that's gone all in on the Peter Pan Shadow and did very well for, uh, for Lucas, so congratulations to them. Next up in top eight, we've got another Ruby Amethyst Spellbook Control. Um, in this one, running seven one drops, um, only three Stylish Surfer Mini, two Crab once again, no other evasive answers, but we see Teeth and Ambition, so that can fill that role. Uh, two Ursula, one Maleficent in this list, and we're seeing the four Yzma in this list as well, absent from the previous ones with that cruel irony to just bounce a threat off the board or return one of our own characters to get some additional card draw. The two Spellbook once again, um, the biggest difference, of course, we're seeing the overbearing Monarch Lady Tremaine, three copies of this, two cost uninkable, two two stat line, quest for one, and not for you. When you play this character, each opponent with more law than you loses one law. So a little more situational than something like Aladdin, but does allow you to keep up in that race a little bit more if your opponent starts to outpace you and opens us up to much easier plays of Lady Tremaine, as easy as turn four. Uh, but other than that, most of the list looks pretty standard, so congratulations to them. Next up in top eight, we're seeing Fireball Spellbook. I am going to the effort of like naming this Fireball because not many decks are running the Dragon's Fire, and I do I do think it makes a big difference. And I'm a big fan of the Dragon's Fire. Just five cost uninkable, banished chosen character, a little more reliable than Lady Tremaine. Um, I think really good in the mirror to be able to take out the opposing Ursulas. Again, like Ursula still gets value because you draw a card just for playing her, um, but still it means that you can get rid of her more reliably than with your stuff like Tremaine, which often they're just going to extend a bit more with an extra one drop or a Kuzgo or something. Um, so yeah, being able to remove that straight away is big. We're seeing a lot of Arthurs now in LeFou loops, which we'll look at a couple of those decks in this top 16. So I think Dragon's Fire is as important as it's ever been uh, currently. So I'm a big fan. Three Maleficent in here, two Ursula, no Elsas, seven one drops, three Kuzgo. Seeing no Crab here. So nothing like, other than the Dragon's Fire, nothing for Evasive, uh, four Be Prepared and two Sorcerer's Spellbook. So yeah, I really like the inclusion of Dragon's Fire. Congratulations to them. Last of the top eight Ruby Amethyst lists, we've got Christian. Um, with the six one drops, we see the three coups go. We are seeing the two crab here to back up the four Stylish Surfer Mini. Two copies of the Peter Pan Shadow, again, to give us more answers to Evasive and just to be annoying, more annoying ourselves with Fox and Maui. Three Stephen Ambitions, three Ursula, four Tremaine. No Elsa in here, no Maleficent, four Friends, four Be Prepared, and two Sorcerer's Spellbook. Sorcerer's Spellbook, quite a popular choice in this particular event. But yeah, congratulations to Christian. Moving into the top 16, we've got Ruby Amethyst Shadow LeFou Loop. So we are running two copies of the Peter Pan Shadow once again to make our evasive characters more annoying. But we're also running three copies of Arthur and four copies of LeFou. Arthur incredibly powerful, three cost uninkable, one three stat line, quest for one, and the student ability. Whenever this character quests, you may return another chosen character of yours to your hand to gain two lore. So you can create really mad plays here where you put this down turn three, um, and then turn four preferably you've got a one or a two drop on the field already um play after turn three and then turn four we quest him to return the additional character back to our hand and then put the food down to ready the arthur and then next turn you can like if, if they can't remove it then you can quest the Arthur to return the LeFou and then put the LeFou back down it just creates this loop so if they don't have smash and dragons like smash is the most common thing that can deal with Arthur which you're seeing in meta um an increase in dragon's fire um obviously you can do things like double teeth and ambitions but yeah this 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 loop is absolutely deadly. We're also see, seeing one copy of You Can Fly just to be an, an additional um, way to deal with opposing evasive, but also just to make us more annoying ourselves. I imagine there was a point in this tournament where they weren't able to bounce the Arthur or ready the Arthur, but just a You Can Fly was enough to keep him out of, um, to keep him safe. So yeah, cool looking list, massive, massive congratulations to them. Next up, we've got Carlos. Once again, the eight one drops, the two coups goes, the two crab to back up the Stylus Surfer Mini. No um, no Peter Pan Shadow in here. Only three rabbit. We're all in on the Tremaine. Big count of the late game cards. Four Tremaine, uh, two Ursula, two Elsa, and four Maleficent. So looking to have a, a, a Carlos looking to have a very strong late game. Three Teeth and Ambitions, four friends on the other side, and four be prepared. So yeah, probably the the heaviest we've seen the top end in these Ruby, Ruby Amethyst lists, but did very well for Carlos, so congratulations to them. And our final Ruby Amethyst list in top 16. We made it, guys. Um, is it 
Kawa or Kawa, I'm, I'm probably butchering that. But nonetheless, a fellow content creator, I've had a look at their channel. I think they've done a lot of Marvel Snap in the past and have got on fully on board with Lorcana as well. Um, they will be linked down below. And they actually topped Swiss. I uh, they posted on Twitter with their with their record. Um, and yeah, I saw this deck and I, I I thought it looked pretty clean. And I actually went to the trouble of um, leaving a comment saying congrats and. Um, what were their final thoughts on the list? Any changes they might make? And they were kind enough to reply. Arthur LeFou combo is just bonkers. And not enough people are abusing it, in my opinion. Merlin Rabbit out for Kuzgo is nice, but not essential. Just helps with less uninkables. Befuddle was fine. Fan the Flames was fine. Maui is ink 99.9% .9 of the time. Hope this helps. It certainly does. It gives me something else to talk about in my review list. Um, but yeah, I really like the look of this list. Really aggressive. We've got four Maleficent with that um, to be an aggro quester. Four Olaf and three Pascal. So tons of one drops to fuel our bounce mechanics. The two, the Kuz goes in here um, over a higher rabbit count, just for, as as they've said, just to help you with your uninkables. Um, four copies of Pinocchio to be another aggressive quest of the LeFou stuff that we talked about, the Arthur and the LeFou to create that loop. And of course, LeFou can just re-ready your aggressive questers as well. Um, one, crab, one copy of Crab in here. Um, four copies of Start Yourself a Mini. Four Goat, just the one rabbit, as I said. Four Maui, they're all the way in on it, but it seemed to not put in a lot of work for them. Two Befuddle, which they said was fine. I love Befuddle. Fuddle, to be honest. I'm thinking of putting these in my more mid to high range Ruby Amethyst. I think it's just such a good tempo swing. Uh, Fan of the Flames is one that I've been trying to make work for a while. Well, I say that like it's been a while since I tried, like chapter one format, I was constantly trying to make Fan of the Flames work and it just never felt good. Um, but yeah, maybe it's found a home in this particular build, but then they, they, they said it was just fine. Um, but that's better than bad. I mean, I'm sure it's still put in some, uh, some work. Four friends on the upside and two sorcerers spell books. So yeah, a really aggressive, mean looking list. So congratulations to them. Okay. Welcome back. In second place, we've got Pavel with some Steel Amber Heroic Songs. Loving this. Um, oh, it's Sleepy's Heroic Songs because there's Sleepy's Flute in here. So we've got four copies of Cinderella Ballroom Sensation to be a cheap singer of our songs Let the Storm Rage On and Strength of a Raging Fire. She can also, of course, shift into our one copy of Stout Hearted Cinderella. Quest for three, five, five stat line, resist two. Even that alone is really strong, but the Singing Sword, when you play a song, you can challenge ready characters, so that's really strong. We've got four copies of Hercules, the two, three stat line, two cost inkable, to be a lovely target for our Floodborne Hercules here at a four count. Six drop inkable, but again, shift for four. Six, three stat line, and resist two, and quest for two. I'm a big Hercules fan. I'm so glad uh, that he's getting his flowers towards the end of the format. Uh, two copies of Prince Eric to become a three, three when challenging, just checking our opponent's ball. Two copies of Robin Hood to just ping things off a bit at a time. And of course, we've got um, we've got multiple cards that do this. So sometimes that one is just the final piece we need. Four copies of Ariel, Spectacular Singer, to sing our five cost songs cheaper, like Grab Your Swords and Whole New World, but also helps us um, find songs from our deck. Four, um, four copies of Gaston, Baritone Pulley, um, being another Singer 5 to sing our five cost songs. Three copies of Benja to remove opposing items, such as opposing Sleepy's Flutes, Fishbone Quills, Sorcerer's Spellbook. Seems like it was very prominent this event so i'm sure it put in work three copies of rapunzel for, for some additional card draw really strong four copies of beast for some even more card draw so we've got lots of access to card draw we're not all in on the whole new world we can play it for the for, for the for, for the complete refresh but if our opponent plays our plays their hand down carelessly we don't need to. We have, a, have other ways of doing it. Four copies of Tinkerbell with a Rock the Boat, putting one damage on all opposing um, all opposing characters. And Puny Pirate, if she banishes a character, you can do another two damage. So all this chip sure does add up. We're also seeing two copies of The World's Greatest Criminal Mind! Um, with its ability to take out a character with five cost or more. So going to be good for taking out opposing Cinderella's. There are more Hercules in format, so that's another target. And of course, in Ruby Amethyst, you can take out the Maui and the Maleficent. And then, as I mentioned, let the Storm Rage on, doing two damage and drawing a card. Strength for a Raging Fire, doing one damage for every character we have. Whole New World for the Hand Refresh. Grab your swords for the spread ping damage and Sleepy's Flute, meaning that we can gain a lore just for tilting it every time we sing a song. So, yeah, glad to see. Sleepy's Flute has fallen off the last couple of tournaments. We haven't seen it do... Um, it hasn't done much for a while, but led Pavel all the way to second place, which we love to see. So, huge congratulations to them.
Going straight to our other Steel Amber Flute deck in top 16, we've got Paul, who is running nearly the exact same list, except this one is minus one Robin Hood, plus one Let the Storm Rage On. Other than that, completely identical to Pavel's list. So congratulations to Paul. Next up in fourth place, we've got some Bucky Discard. So four copies of Bucky with a squeak ability. Whenever we whenever we play a Floodborne, our opponent discards a card. Also three copies of Prince John here to let us draw cards whenever our opponent discards them. And both these characters have Ward, which make them really annoying to get rid of. If you're not playing, grab your swords. Our Floodborne characters that can work with Bucky to discard are four copies of Jafar Dreadnought, four Beast Tragic Hero, uh, two Hercules Divine, uh, Divine Hero, and Giant Fairy Tinkerbell. Also running four copies of Tiny Tink, meaning that we, we have access to do to play her on turn four. And even if we're not doing that, just shifting Big Tink always feels stronger because you can immediately challenge and get full benefit from her ability. Um, three copies of the one drop Flynn Rider here, who can shift into one of our two copies of the Floodborne versions so or something else that opens us up to a cheaper turn four shift so that we can then play additional cards. Four copies of Jafar Dreadnought, as I said, who also has a really nice stat line. Three, four, takes out a lot and survives a lot and lets us draw extra cards. Cards, which is always good. Um, also two copies of the charming rogue Flynn Rider just to be another um, aggressive quester and again can make our opponent discard if they do choose to challenge into him. Three copies of Eric just to check our opponent. Three Benja for the hat for the item removal. Also two copies of, Lufu of Lucifer. Dirty card. Mouse Casher. When you play this character each opponent chooses and discards either two cards or one action. So this can just end games on his own. Beast obviously gets the additional draw. We got Genie on the job at a two count. Um, with the disappear ability, just bouncing characters back to our opponent's hand for the tempo. We're also seeing two copies of John Silver, which is definitely novel in Bucky Discard. Um, I would like to know how much work this put in. I, I, hey, I'm, I love I love a bit of John Silver. I'm always happy to see John Silver. But I mean, like again, it's 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 an annoying card just to pick your fights ability, giving reckless to an opponent to an opposing character. Um, but yeah, interesting inclusion in this particular deck. I wonder if they stand by it. Vincent, if for any reason you are watching my video, how did the John Silver do for you? We need to know. The people need to know. We're seeing two copies of Hercules. Nothing that we can shift onto. Um, this deck is just waiting for Morph. Um, but yeah, still another Floodborne character we can play on turn six. Four Big Tink, as I mentioned earlier. Three Hypnotize, which also forces a discard and lets us draw a card. Four copies of Smash to remove those Aerials, those Arthurs, those um, Docs things like that. Four copies of Sudden Chill to force a discard and is a song so easier to play. Two Strength for a Raging Fire and three Grab Your Swords for additional ways to chip away and remove opposing threats. So this looks really good. Um, John Silver I think is a bit random but I, I'm not against it. I ain't done. I'm not against it. I, I just want, I just need to know why. Vin we need to track Vincent down. We need to track them down and find out but yeah congratulations to them. Next up in top eight we've got some Puppet Bounce. We got a straight away highlight Pinocchio on the run. Shift three, five cost uninkable, three three stat line, quest for two, and listen to your conscience. When you play this character, you may return chosen character or item with cost three or less to the player's hand. So I said about how like how much I'm enjoying Buffalo at the moment. It's just such a good tempo sw um, swing. But a three cost or lower, yeah, like that that sets them off even worse. Gets the opposing Arthur off the board that they've just LeFou looped. Like, against opposing bodyguards. Like, yeah, like, it has been in the back, the back of my mind for a while of... Is this Pinocchio better than it's being given credit for? I'm not saying this confirms that it is. Like, it could, like it could have not put in much work for, for, for Dennis or who knows... But I've always thought it was an interesting card, especially because, like, the the aggro Pinocchio is commonly played. Um, the problem is, like, but you still, like, because you put this down turn two, and then turn three, yeah, you quest with this one to get your full three lore, and then you just shift, and so you're removing a threat. I really like this um, Pinocchio on the run inclusion, but let's look through everything. Four copies of Maleficent as an aggro, four Olaf and four Pascal to be additional one drops to feed our bouncers. All the way in on the coups goes as well. This is so early aggressive. Um, four snake, four fox, four rabbit, four goat. The Arthurs, as I mentioned, the four Pinocchios, the four Maleficent as well for the additional draw. Two Benja for the item removal. The bodyguards here, Hercules and the Prince. Hercules having a better stat line, but the Prince, um, having resist one. But the good thing about Hercules is that he he takes out the opposing Madame Mim Fox going into him. 
uh, which the Prince doesn't, but again, they're both here at four count. Uh, but I do think Hercules is probably better. Uh, four copies of um, Goat and Four Rabbit, I think I've said that, but yeah, love the Pinocchio on the run. Only one copy of Whole New World, so there is an option, but we're not all in. Um, and two copies of Sorcerer's Spellbook. Really like this. I definitely want to try this list. Yeah, Pinocchio on the run. Interesting. Is it better than it's been highlighted? Or is this a one-off? Let me know in the comments what you think. But congratulations to them. It led them to a top eight finish. Moving back into the top 16, we've got some Ruby Sapphire Pubby items. This used to be like Pop Control, but I don't think that that's the best reflection of it because it has control options. Quite a lot of them, actually. But I think Grand Pubby is your main... Is your main route to victory here. But let's take a look. Three copies of Mother, Go um, Mother Gothel. Normally only paired with Rapunzel. But obviously this isn't an, uh, isn't an Amber deck. Um, but just to be an additional card to work with Grand Pabby. Because she comes in with that fixed damage. And we just want to remove that damage to get Grand Pabby to give us a lore boost. Four copies of Corella Deville to be an evasive answer. Four Judy Hops to remove our own items if we need to. But also counter opposing items. Four Flavisham to when we put him down and when he quests. To remove one of our many items that we've got to draw two cards. Four copies of Nick Wilde to refresh our Porpsicles. Two Maui for some quick removal. Um, one Tremaine. Uh, for the removal. Three Pubby, as I said, whenever you remove one or more characters from one, from one of your characters, gain two lore. So I think this is our main key to victory here. One copy of Hades for some extra removal. Four copies of Tamatoa to take advantage of all these items. One copy of Maleficent. So low count of the, like just one-offs of these hard removal cards. Um, two copies of Develop Your Brain to find the right pieces. Two copies of Launch which I don't think I've ever seen this in the top top 8 or 16 list. Um, three cost uninkable. Banish chosen item of yours to deal five damage to chosen character. So we've got loads of items here. And yeah, five's going to take out most of the meta. Obviously it doesn't hit Ursula. Um, doesn't take her out, I mean. Um, or Elsa. Something like Cinderella or... Um, yeah, Cinderella with the, with the resist 2, the stout-hearted one. But yeah, most other things are going to fall to this. Two teeth and ambitions. One, one jump ahead. One, let it go. Four, be prepared. And then our items are one shield of virtue, which is exert and pay three to ready a chosen character. They can't quest for the rest of the turn. Four copies of magic golden flower. Um, banish this to remove up to three damage from a chosen character. So this again works well, good synergy with our grand pubby. Porpsicle draws us cards. Works well with Nick Wilde. And again, something else that works with grand pubby because the secondary ability can remove damage counters. One copy of gumbo pot the best i've ever tasted exert to remove one damage from e e one damage each from up to two chosen characters so again grand pabby synergy one poisoned apple take a bite exert and banish this item exert chosen character if a princess character is chosen banish her instead so really good against tiana bodyguards which is becoming more and more popular. And again, there are other, other, like, most decks have a princess. And even if it's not a princess, then exerting characters is still strong. And again, it's just innately another item card. Four Fishbone Quill for the ramp and four Maurice's Workshop. Whenever you play another item, you may pay one ink to draw a card. Yeah, it looks like this deck is trying to do a lot. I don't like the amount of one-offs, personally. It's certainly one of the more interesting lists that we've looked at for a while. So props to that. Um, but I haven't tried Grand Pabby that much. As I'm not going to lie. It's not something that ever appealed to me. I tried the more control variant of, of, um, of Porp, Red, Red, Blue Porp. But I haven't tried the Grand Pabby version. Off the bat, this looks inconsistent to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just my inexperience. But it looks like it's trying to... I mean, it's not that it's trying to do too many things. Maybe I'm just being tricked into thinking that by the amount of one-offs because it's just a variety of control cards. One Tremaine, one Hades, one Maleficent, one One Jump. Well, One Jump ahead isn't, isn't control, but that's ramp. But we've got Fishbone Quill for the ramp. Um, and then, yeah, most other things are just to do with removing threats to get rid of the Evasis with Cruella, draw a lot of cards with Flavisham and Nick Wilde repl uh, re replacing our Porps and he can quest a bit. Maui is a response... I don't know. What do you guys think of this list? To me, it looks a little messy, but it led them to a top 16 finish. So maybe I need to eat my words, but huge congratulations to them.
Next up in top 16, I didn't realise there was another Bucky discard, otherwise I would have put this next to the other one, but we'll have another quick look regardless. Most of this looks similar, we're seeing three copies of Captain Hook here instead of the Eric to be our one drop, which also checks the board, having a 3-2 stat line when challenging. Um, once again, the four Bucky, three Prince John. Um, we're seeing two copies of Ring the Bell in here to banish a chosen damaged character. Low account of um, Tiny Tactician Tinkerbell. And the main difference here being the inclusion of two Relentless Beast with the second wind. Whenever an opposing character is damaged, you may ready this character. Um, I think I prefer the other builds, personally. Even though I, I, I said I felt it was a bit random with the two John Silver. Um, but overall, I still like this build. I don't know, like, is... What's, is Beast better to run than John Silver? I mean, John Silver gets... A sh I think Beast Relentless is probably a stronger card overall just because you can create scenarios where you get loads of quests with him in one turn. But obviously, just the fact that John Silver has an ability that come that, that a come-into-play ability. So I'm not sure. I, um, obviously, the Ring the Bell is the difference. Nonetheless, Bucky Discard is a lethal deck and doing really well again. So huge congratulations to them. Next up, we've got some Sapphire Steel Wheel. Most of this is pretty standard, um, except for we're seeing a 3-3 Aurora line, um, which is another way to sing our five-cost songs on turn three. So that's something. And again, just the protective embrace giving ward to our other characters is strong. Um, but yeah, let's look over everything. Like I mentioned, the 3-3 three, three line of Aurora. We've got three Prince Eric for checking our opponent. Two pr um, Detective Mickey for the ramp. Two Tiny Tactician and four Big Tink. Four Bell for the uh, quest for five if we're at ten and uh, as an additional way to funnel our Inkwell. Three, uh, three Flavisham for the card draw. Only two copies of Cogsworth giving um, resist one to our other characters and has, has Ward himself. Also seeing the two copies of Beast, which we saw not too long ago come up as uh, instead of Benja, being that being item removal, but also just being a bit stronger. Questing, a, well, quest for the same, but being a, being a bit stronger as a 4-4 and being a five cost means he can also sing our five cost songs and and we can shift into our tragic hero beast. One copy of Robin Hood Unrivaled Archer. Six cost inkable, 4-4. Four, four. Quest for two and two abilities. Feed the poor. If you play this character, when you play this character, if an opponent has more cards in hand than you, draw a card. And good shot during your turn. This character has evasive. Um... Four, t four Tink, as I said. Three Hades for the removal. Four Nothing to Hide to get information about the opponent's hand. Three Smash, four Let It Go. Four Whole New World, four Grab Your Swords, four Pop, and four Bish Fishbone Quill. So quite normally this is like a four Hades and two Let It Go. But prioritizing the higher singer cam song count here, which I, it makes sense when you've got more. I think this is running more five costs to sing them. So it does make sense. Um, again, we saw it recently, but still not common to see the um, hard-headed beast in here, but I really like it. I think the one Robin Hood's a bit random, personally. It's probably I'd probably just go to the fourth Hades, uh, but maybe it put in a lot of work for Thomas, but nonetheless, huge congratulations to them. And our final list in top 16, we've got some, some Amber Amethyst Hyper Aggro. This list looks really very similar to the one that I recently profiled on the channel. Um, the video will be linked down below. But a few differences in here. The first that I noticed is a low account of Madame Mim Fox. But let's go through all of it. Three copies of Ballroom Sensation Cinderella, purely to sing our songs, Friends on the Other Side, and Be Our Guest. Um, four copies of Lilo and four Maleficent for our powerful aggro characters as a, as a one drop. But also Pascal as another one drop that can cheat out some lore. Four LeFou to be an aggro quester. Four Sim with the bodyguard ability, the four counter snake, only the two fox, as I just said, only three copies of Pinocchio. I ran this as a four, but just three here. Uh, three copies of Doc. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Doc in my testing, and I was only running two, but must have done well for Fabian. Um, for Arthur, two fox, two Maleficent. I wasn't running myself for the additional card draw. Uh, four Merlin. Sorry, four Goat, four Rabbit, four Befuddle, which I think is one of the strongest cards in this deck, to be honest, especially against Ruby Amethyst. And then the song, as I said. So, yeah, Hyper Aggro is very real, very strong. If people are, if you're not prepared for it, it can just absolutely cheat wins away. Um, so I know how good this deck can be. It's just the lower Fox count is the biggest question mark for me because this just lets you control the board a bit better, like even it out. Um, and it's another way of protecting your aggro characters. 
So this is the only thing I am I actively dislike, the lot of the two count of Fox. But other than that, deck looks really good. So congratulations to them. And that's it for the top 16 deck list for the Enchanted Tour Winter's Edition. Uh, looks like it was a really fun event. Again, huge shout out to the to everyone that made of it, made that event possible. And yeah, eight Ruby Amethyst lists, but eight other decks, eight other rings were well represented. So you love to see it. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Lorcana. Hit the like button to show your support. And we'll see you soon.